you've uh, slept in the shop before finishing oh, up yeah. jobs for the deadline, right? Yeah, we've done that too. Um, I love that stuff. I love working through the weekends when like we got this launch and we need this and we need these parts by Monday and it's like, boom. And it's like, you know, I'm like, we got to pay double. We got to do this. We got to do that. And my guys just step up and then you work through the whole weekend. Like, you know, I love that feeling. Like, I, you know, not that it happens all the time, but whenever I see those as opportunities and then you end up being like this with your customer because they're like, when the going gets tough, we know that we can actually depend on this team over here to do what it takes and we're going to get good parts. Yeah, so. that, that that meeting I would get across with Yvonne and JC and I'd be like, hey, uh, so we got a job, hot job. It's got to be done this weekend and delivered Monday morning. It's that important. Do we want it? We got to get an answer now. Who's willing? And yeah. that's that little powwow right there. You know, maybe so. Yeah, I ain't got nothing going on this week, and I'd love to do that. Let's do it. And all of a sudden, you know, you're helping somebody, and they remember it. They're a lot of. I do a lot of work for a lot of local shops here too. They they farm out work, and uh, and it's not. They don't view me as competition. They view me as another source. As you know, hey, give it to John. He can probably get this done for us this weekend. And it's our customer. We can't, but we can at least still work together yeah. and get it done. And that happens. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's all fun. I saw Callie Keen. Oh, what's up, <laughs> Callie? You know, John, I think that, you know, a little a word of advice to people, exactly what you just said. You make the decision to actually perform and put the work in for your customer, even if it's after hours. And from all the years of experience that I have, I've learned that the greatest bonds are built in those times. Right. Yeah. Because those are those are the times where all of a sudden you're talking to the engineer, you're talking to the team, they're talking to their team, they're having their their powwows and they're like, OK, Titans team or John's team, they're working on this and they're going to do this and and they're going to send us a tracking number and they're going to do this or they're going to drive over. And and there's so much communication that happens that all of a sudden this bond forms mm -hmm. and you end up becoming like family with your customer. And that, that's a great thing. Like that was always my attitude with, you know, our rocket company down south. It was like, I was just like, you call me up at two in the morning. I will drive parts down to your facility. I will go in and start machining. You like, you give me an opportunity. Like you need anything. Like I will be there for you. My team will be there for you. We will work day and night. We'll do absolutely what it takes. And we beg for those opportunities because as soon as the opportunities come and believe me, they came, we, we perform and we do it. And it's like football or like, you know, yeah. sports it's like, Oh, like, let's make this happen. Like, Oh, like, Oh, how's that quality? Oh, you know, wrapping those parts and shipping them off. And, and there's, I take the advantage. I take the opportunity to actually drive eight miles, eight hours down to deliver something because I'm like, I know when I walk in, like you're, you're just, it's such a service you're delivering. And at the end of the day, it, it, it matters. You know, those other that's shops, what the they, whole thing, what's that? The other shops, the owners, they know, they know what it took to get that done. And yeah. like you just said, you walk in that door, they're like, holy cow, we did it. He did what he said he was going to do, and and they're, they're just so thankful. They're they're just like it's like thank you for your help. You know, it's not it's not about time. Thanks. See you next time. It's not no. It's a good thing. It's all. Yeah, I love, I I love all the other shops we I work with. I was I was like there was another question about quality and how do you when you quote something and how do you make sure you get enough quality in there but actually deliver the parts. You know on budget and all that and uh i would that's say on, the, on what's that go ahead i was gonna say that's where the 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 multi-part fixturing helps if you can throw in more parts in there get that you're not making it longer you're actually shortening the cycle time but having the time you know here's this crazy setup i gotta do a sign plate and check these levels and it, it's it's difficult you're bouncing around a tenth indicator trying to get that surface just right and if you got to open the door every minute, you don't have time to check the part you're making. And that's when that's, that's when they pop up. Oh, you didn't check that one. But every time something's wrong, they didn't check it. Yeah. And it's not sometimes that, you know, they didn't 
have time to. It's you know, so you got to really think about that. Oh, that's a couple minute cycle time. I better multi part this thing and give them a, a good you know 12, 12, 15 minute cycle time so they can do other things. That's the yeah, absolutely. That's John right there. Yeah, what's he How got? Well? What's up, John? How do you balance so, quality over meeting deadline? Quality first. Quality first. This is this is uh this is what I've learned. I want when when we deliver parts, we want to over deliver on quality all the time. That's how you build a reputation. That's how you keep consistent work. Over deliver on the quality and uh and make it like I love when customers are like, man, this is like jewelry. Like this is so beautiful. The surface finish and you can put this on a chain on your neck like, oh, you know, like it's just, you know, the parts are just fantastic. And what I what I've learned is that even when it comes to even when it comes to the boxes and how the tape is and and how the packaging is everything matters and you just you need to put complete quality as i see my video going a little blurry ah but you need to like put complete quality in every single thing you do because that customer is going to open that box and the box needs to be perfect when they open it up, the wrapping, the foam, everything needs to be perfect. When they show the parts, the parts need to be perfect to print and need to be dialed. And you have to think to yourself, your customer is looking at all these things at their shop. And what I've learned is when you have exceptional quality, they will pass that part around and they will actually show how beautiful that part is. And what I've also learned is that when it doesn't meet spec and it comes out looking like garbage and the finishes aren't nice, then they will also pass it around and you'll also have people coming around. So you have a production line or there'll be an inspection and they'll call the leadership over and they'll look at the part and examine and they'll talk about the flaws and the mistakes. And at that moment, you have all the leaders looking at that part, recognizing that your quality is substandard, that you sent them garbage. And when you fix it, it's too late. They'll never call them for, for that again. So what your, your reputation has already been tarnished. So what you need to do is make sure, this is just a word to machine shops out there, you need to make sure your quality is exceptional every single time, perfect and consistently, because that's how you build a reputation and that's how you get consistent work, by performing. Boom. Another piece of advice I can think of is um, when I was on the MFG.com, um, you get to see the customers and you see where they live, not live, but I mean, you see where they're located and everything I'm like, wow, that company's here in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find them. So what I did, I didn't even bid the job. I just downloaded the models, the print, and I just sat here over a weekend and I said, you know what? I'm just going to make this part. I'm going to knock on their door on Monday. So I come in that there is a series of parts. I sent you guys some photos. There's a, a long part. Uh, aluminum part one of the photos i don't know if matt can pull that up or not but i literally just programmed it ran it and walked into there with my business card and showed it to them and they're like uh who are you you know and why do you have our part and I'm like well i made this for you i'm part of mfg and um looking to win this job and they went inspected it and they loved it and i got the job so there's all kinds of creative ways you can you can build customers and um, when I'm out, there it is. And they, they were just so excited when they saw it. And uh, I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's no, I didn't even have, at this time, I didn't own any metric taps. So mm. the holes are just drilled. And I told them, don't use this part. There's no threads in it yet, you know, and it's just, I just want to show you an example of it. And, uh, but that was still enough to get the job. Um, another right. one was a guy had a question about how do you manage your quality, quoting, the the whole business side of it. And it's it's a I don't really believe in multitasking. I think when you multitask, you, you there's a give and take. You're giving away something to be able to do two things, but there are smart ways to multitask and say, I'm delivering parts to anodize while I'm out there. I'll take a different route home and I'm looking around at buildings and I'm dropping off a business card here and there and trying to and do sales on the way back. 
there's, you know, I don't like set aside a full day to do it. I just, when the opportunity is there, don't be lazy, get out there and sell. That's the. 